It's the end of the Fifty Shades franchise! Glorious! No, I won't give in, I won't give in till I'm victorious! And I will defend, I will defend! Fifty Shades Free, this is the third and final chapter in the Fifty Shades franchise and it once again is directed by Dave Foley and it stars Jamie Dornan and Dakota Johnson. Thankfully the movie wastes no time because Christian and Nana immediately marry in the first scene of the film and they fully embrace their love and share a life of luxury. But just as she steps into her role as Mrs. Grey, new threats emerge that could jeopardize their happy ending before it even begins. Now guys, these movies are famously very shitty and I think they left the worst for last because I can barely call this a movie. In fact, you look at my channel, everything is dash movie review. I don't call this a movie. This is nothing. This is a sequence of montages and music videos crammed together with some troubled editing here and there, though it doesn't reflect the whole of the film, to make it seem like a story. Because it's exactly the same movie as the last, but nothing has consequence. Nothing here matters. There's no gravity. There's no drama to anything. Remember that scene in the trailer where that architect girl is throwing herself at Christian Grey? and Anna steps in and there's some drama there with these two girls fighting for this one guy. Nothing happens. It's immediately forgotten after that. The girl shows up once again in the movie later, but it's not even talking to Christian or to Anna. We never see her again talking to anyone that actually matters. And they actually got so lazy with the sex in this that it barely happens. It's so quick. It's so fast. It's so short. I'm not even pleading to watch the sex that was in these movies. But if you're actually good at something and if you're selling something, at least do it. At least make it happen. And this movie just doesn't. The first sex scene in this film is a wide shot far away from the bed, panning through a room and we see Christian Grace's ass. That's it. Every scene in this movie feels the same because this is what one hour and 40 minutes of Fifty Shades Freed is. Two people are talking, a conflict emerges, a conflict is resolved. Move on to the next scene, hence and repeat, hence and repeats throughout one hour and 40 minutes. Nothing even matters. Remember this dude from the last film who's supposed to be this big threat in this film? He pops up here and there, but then when it comes to the big climax of the film, it's done in like five minutes. I'm not even joking. I'm seriously not joking. Everything in this movie is so easily resolved. It's annoying. It's painstakingly bad. And you know what's the worst? Jamie Dornan and Dakota Johnson are both legitimate good actors, but their performances diverge so far and wide. In the first movie, she's really trying. He's really bored. In the second movie, they're kind of on the same level of boredom because, yeah, you should be bored. But in this movie, it's so painful how she is so bored and you see Jamie Dornan actually trying when there is no character to work with in the script for this movie is atrocious to watch. There's one storyline that they revealed in the last trailer and I did watch it because I don't care, but I'm not going to reveal it here. It adds nothing because you know they fucked up because one hour into this film, it's still not revealed, that plot line. And you just know that it's coming, but then they do nothing with it. And you know what? At the end, this movie tries to pretend like it has earned a montage. And we see a montage of where these characters started in the first movie, going into the second movie. And then they show you scenes from the beginning of this movie. That's one of my biggest pet peeves, when we see a montage of events that happened earlier in the film. We saw it. We're here, we're sitting down for one hour, almost two hours, and it's absolutely unnecessary. Yes, the dialogue is atrocious, but you already know that. The chemistry between these two is an existence, but you already know that. There's no progression, there's no drama, there's no stakes, there's no anything. There's nothing to grab on in this story. But you already know that. You are expecting it, and I'm sorry to bring nothing new to the table, bring no news, reveal nothing that you don't already know with this review. I'm not even going to complain that these characters don't have any development because there aren't any characters to have any development. There are a bunch of music videos, a bunch of montages, a bunch of driving and Anastasia Steele is suddenly a race car driver that just knows how to do stuff magnificently well. Jamie Dornan 
is the least on screen of all these movies and that's it I don't have anything to say I know this is a very messy review but this is a very messy movie this is the worst of them all 50 Shades 3 knocks the other two out of the park but you know what I'm glad it's over and I'm actually glad that this is the worst one we went through a series of troubled movies believing the scream of the crop shit piece for the last is absolutely the true meaning of cinematic excrement. But what did you think of Fifty Shades Free, my beautiful geekies? Did you enjoy it? Did you not? Let me know your rankings of the Fifty Shades movies, I guess. And let me know what good performances do you enjoy from Dakota Johnson and Jamie Dornan. Thank you so much for watching. You guys are the best. Tomorrow, I have a non-spoiler review for Black Panther and the Sunday, my review for Avengers. The first, the original, the greatest. Thank you once more for watching my beautiful geekies. You guys seriously are the best. And until tomorrow, you stay beautiful, you stay geeky, and if you haven't done so yet, click the subscribe button and the bell so you can be geeky. United!